but never gonna stop until helicopters are in cell blocks. What do we want? Justice. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Justice. When do we want it? Now. Justice for Tyrone West. Justice for Tyrone West. Um, so Tawanda was mentioning this weekend we're having a circle of voices that's going to be uh, centered around uh, the West Coalition and um, Tyrone West and the impact that police brutality has had on that family. And um, it's going to be, we expect a nice crowd to come out for this one. And I wanted to just say that um, for us, it's a combination of things. So it's like Tawanda who is, this is week 185, is that right? 185 weeks in a row to be outside, to be somewhere, to be addressing police brutality in this country is incredible. Like, I know no one who has done that. No one other than Tawanda. There may be some other people out in the world, but I don't know who the hell they are. And so I just want to acknowledge Tawanda for being that for us. Because if, if, if not for Tawanda, we wouldn't be out here. None of you would be out here right now. So I want to acknowledge her for that first. And then I also want to pay homage to Tyrone West for paying the ultimate price for the rest of us to be fighting for justice in this country. A thing that he should not have had to pay for us to be able to do this. So I just want to like first put that out. And then the, the, the thing for me with Circles of Voices and with this work, what I've won, so Circles of Voices has been up since March 21, 2015. And about 2,100 people have gone through Circles of Voices workshops in that time. And I started out doing the work to address the impact of racism in America. And so the first maybe eight or ten sessions were strictly about racism. And what I found over time is that if we deal with racism only, and homophobia exists, if racism goes away today, and homophobia exists after racism is gone, and transphobia exists after racism is, is gone, if, if isms and other phobias continue to exist, we'll still have a fucked up world after all is said and done. And so now it's about pulling people from other arenas, like where are the people at the edge, really? If we can take care of the people at the margins who are getting killed right now, the ones at the margins, we make sure that they're okay, then everybody else is going to be okay at the same time. You know, there's people right now living in Baltimore who think they live in utopia, and utopia is a bad fucking word right now on some levels or another. The people who are living essentially resource well in this city, who are living with money, who can go to places that they want to go, who can be places wherever they want to be, those people think they're living in utopia, but really utopia has blood on its hands. You think utopia has blood on its teeth. The people who live there have blood on their teeth. They're vampires because they're sucking away from everybody else in the city to have the things that they have. And so right now, I think the work for us, it's not about protecting our own group. It's about protecting all of the groups who are in, in danger right now. And until we do that, they're going to keep plucking us off. Like right now, you go after the Muslims. You go after the Muslims, and if the rest of us stand still and do nothing while the Muslims are being attacked, then they'll be gone, and they won't be able to fight with us. You go after gay, the gay community, and then, then when they're gone, they won't be able to fight with the rest of us. You go after the transgender community, and when they're gone, you create, you know, circumstances for things like this band right now, folks. I don't think, and I'm not sure, I don't think this is going to eventually be permanent. It's laying the fucking groundwork for it to be permanent. So right now they set up the entire structure and get shot down, but the first time anything happens, the borders will be shut down. And then we could possibly move to a place where we're having internment camps again. It's not like America hasn't had them. We've had them before. And so we have to now stand with each other. And until we do that, we're, not, we're going to continue to deal with this same thing. Until we start to stand together, transgender, gay, you know, short, tall, black, white, Asian, until we start standing together, we're not going to win this. And that's why I do the work that I do. And the last piece that I want to say about us as, um, as activists, after all is said and done, you know, in the city, it wasn't that long ago that Freddie Gray was killed. But if you stretch it out a little bit, you know, like you go out a couple of years, you know, it wasn't yesterday. It wasn't yesterday. And what I would like you all to do is to look and see who's still standing right now. Who's still standing? After all is said and done, who's still doing the work? And you can look around at the people who are here right now. There are people, there are people out here, and uh, you're pointing at you. Chris is pointing at you from behind. You're doing the work. But Chris, you're doing the work too. And Boom is still doing the work. And there are people out here. Kevin, still doing the work. Zach is still doing the work. Gotcha.
people back there, you're still doing the work. We got people still out here, even after the lights go away, they're still out here doing the damn work. And that's really what it comes down to. We need to be looking at who's still doing the work and who's still pulling people in to get the work done. And uh, there's a piece that's happened around us in Baltimore, you know, around activism, you know. It's been disintegrating in this city around activists and our, our impact on each other. And I'm going to say my impact on other people and other people's impact on me. But after all is said and done, you know, I'm going to continue. I'm going to keep working no matter what comes. I'm going to keep doing what I need to do because really after all is said and done, it ain't going to get no better unless I get my ass in it. And it'll get no better. And no matter how much I get fired at, I'm going to keep doing my work. And no matter how much it keeps coming, how much we get fired at, we got to keep doing our work, you know? I got a 22-year-old daughter. And I don't want her children to be coming to the world that I came into. I'm going to do everything that I can do to shift it around a little bit so her world ain't like mine. You know, I, I remember, I'm 50, 56 almost. I remember the day that Martin Luther King was shot. Remember the day that he was shot. And it changed my life that day. It changed everything for me. Up to then, I was almost seven when it happened. Up to then, I didn't even realize I was black. I knew my skin color was different than someone else's, but I didn't know I was black. And what it meant to be that in America. We got little black kids being shocked into American racism every day. At the moment when they become conscious of what's around them, at the moment that they become conscious of what's around them, they get that they could die because of their skin color. I was six years old when I found that out, and nobody had told me before that that we continue to live in a system like that and the good ones of us, the good ones, are doing everything that we can do to stop that shit, it makes it our fault too. It makes it that we're colluding with that if we're not doing everything that we can do to stop that. And so for me, I've decided for the rest of my life, come what may, I'm gonna do whatever I can to stop it. And so I continue to do the work that I'm doing because it will stop around me. I can't stop it in the entire world, but it will stop around me because of the work that I do. And we need to bring more and more people into this fight so we can end this once and for all. And really by any means necessary, folks, we gotta put stuff up right now that we've never put up. It's in two years, two years, it will be four, 400 years since 1619. 400 years. And what hasn't happened is we haven't been willing to put everything on the line in order to secure our freedom. We haven't been willing to put everything on the line. And we got to, at some point, be willing to put everything on the line to secure our freedom. And we have not done it yet, because if we had done it, it would have been secured. We have to stop being afraid of this brutal-ass system that we live in. Stop being afraid of it. Or if you are afraid, get your ass up anyway. Get up anyway and do something to change this thing. So that's it for me. It's, it, it, I just wanted to leave you with that. And that for us, it's like we have to. We have to. Whatever disparate communities we are, we have to start standing with each other so we can change this system. And if we don't do it, then we will leave behind our grandchildren to take care of it for us. We will be a generation of cowards. A generation of cowards. Standing in the face of tyranny. Trump right now, people keep talking about Trump as if Trump is the problem. Trump ain't the problem. Trump is not the problem. The problem is the rest of us that sit there and watch this coward. Watch this coward does it, do the things that he does, and then we don't do everything that we can do to shut their asses down. We are the cowards. We're the cowards. We allow that stuff. He shouldn't even be in office. And that he's in office, we can shut him down, but we don't act like we have that power. We need to take the power and do what we got to do so we can make sure that our babies don't suffer in the ways that we have. Saturday, Impact Hub, 6 to 9 p.m., we're having a session about Tawanda, about Tyrone West, about brutality, about police brutality, and its impact on black people and other people in this country. Come out. Tell them where to find the more info. Say it again. Your Twitter and where to find more info. Okay, yeah, so on, you can go to an intoignorance.com to find my webpage and then Circles of Voices on Facebook and there's an Eventbrite page there and you can get free tickets. It's all free, folks. You can come out. We do a potluck, bring something to eat or drink. If you want, don't bring anything to eat or drink. If you don't want to, there will be food there. There will be drink there. Come out, hang with us, do the real work. And I'm going to tell you, when you come to Circles of Voices, and this is no bullshit, when you come to Circles of Voices, bring yourself ready to do some real work. If you're not ready to do some real work, you shouldn't come. You shouldn't come. And people come and they have a pretty incredible time. We have an average of maybe 
80 to 100 people showing up at these sessions every month. And people are doing the real work to change our city. And the people are coming from all corners of the city to start having the conversations that we should have been having centuries ago. Come hang with us, do the real work.